Right, welcome back, guys. We're going to take a look at the first of the modules now. We're going to grab a equalizer module and check this out. Uh, let's just take a look first at the operation of the EQ page over here, and then we'll dive into some of the features along the top line afterwards. Um, firstly, we've got a number of different uh, options. We'll take a look at these. The basic operation of these is these little handles on the side will adjust the Q value for your different bands. Obviously, boosting it will boost the, um, the amount of gain for the EQ band. Uh, moving it from side to side will adjust the frequencies. Uh, you can also select multiple EQs at the same time. These can be moved around and adjusted accordingly. Uh, control clicking will deselect one of those, and you can then move the rest around. Uh, there's a couple of other modifier keys that you can use on these. Holding down shift and moving from left to right will adjust the EQ's frequency range without adjusting any of the amplitude at all. And if we release shift and hold down shift again and then pull up first, you'll see now we've locked only the gain in without any frequency changes at all. And then holding down alt will uh, solo the band that you're currently working on as you move it around. You can just check that out on the kick now, for example. It's pretty handy for finding uh, problem frequencies and then getting rid of those. Really nice little feature that. Let's just reset this again. Uh, you can reset them by the reset toggle at the top. Uh, let's take a look quickly at the different EQs that we have on hand. We'll take a look at the bell curves first. Uh, we have a, the standard bell uh, right here. The EQ can be adjusted as such. And then in addition to this, we have a proportional EQ. Uh, so the proportional EQ, should we jump back to the bell curve quickly? Just take a look at the Q settings as we adjust the uh, type to proportional. You'll see how it narrows the Q automatically. Uh, what a proportional Q does is the more gain you're, you apply to the EQ, the narrower the Q will get. So it's proportional to the amount of gain that you push. This kind of results in a much finer boost at high levels, and then it rounds off as you get down to the bottom. Um, and then you also have a uh, band shelf. This one is good for just se selecting wide ranges of uh, frequency to boost that or lower that. Very much the same as the low shelf or the high shelf. And we've got two shelving types or three shelving types. Uh, the analog shelf, which is kind of your typical shelving. Uh, you can actually push this past 0.1Q, you'll get this uh, slightly uh, different shape from pushing it past there, but I have a key value of 0 0.1 will give you that. And then you can steepen the shelf by going all the way up to a key value of 1. We've also got a back sandal shelf, uh, which is a much gentler shelving. Um, you'll see that the Q value is disabled in this case. There's no Q setting for that. Let's just take a listen to it then. So that's quite handy just for gentle um, roll of sub boosts around the lows or highs. We're going to check out the vintage. The vintage is uh, also uh, slightly akin to the standard analog one. However, this one will actually give you a resonant boost uh, when you adjust the Q frequency or the Q setting. You can see that resonance kicking in there if we go all the way down. So this is uh, usually quite good for kind of just rolling off lows, but then balancing that out with that sort of resonant boost higher up the frequency spectrum. Um, this goes for the high shelves as well. They're exactly the same. And then we also have some filtering as well. We have a flat uh, high pass filter and a low pass filter obviously as well. Uh, this Q setting will adjust the uh, steepness of the filter right up to 40 dB per octave slope 
which is more than steep enough, right down to a 6 uh, dB slope. And then in t on top of that, you also have a resonant filter. And you'll see this one, the Q setting changes back to a Q value rather than a dB per octave value. Uh, this one will act more like a standard filter, standard resonant filter, where you can dial in a bit of resonance. Once again, uh, this kind of filter great for kind of rolling off lows and then compensating for them by bringing that resonance in as well. You can see that puncher that kick comes out nicely while still cutting off a lot of the uh, unnecessary frequencies below that. So that pretty much covers all the EQ types. Um, you can add in EQs just by clicking on these little plus signs. You have up to eight uh, t sorry, you have up to 12 different bands that you can apply. And yeah, like I said, these can all be adjusted at the same time as well. Um, these do not have uh, uh, MSEQs like the uh, Ozone one. The Ozone EQ can actually set this to an MS or mid-side mode. Uh, this one is purely stereo and you cannot adjust the left and right independently of one another. If you do want to do that, you'll have to grab the Ozone EQ or use something like Cubase's built-in frequency. But for the most part, uh, most of your mixing tasks should be uh, manageable with an EQ just like this. So once again, we're going to reset this again, and we're going to just take a look at the top here. Uh, you can see you've got some uh, visualization options here. Uh, we can change the scale of the um, frequency spectrum. If we go to linear, you'll see how this skews everything. Most of our top frequencies are in focus here. All our subs are kind of congregating at the bottom. you also notice that this automatically turns off our keyboard at the bottom. Uh, that just does not display because there's too much being clumped up down at the bottom there. Um, it is handy to have these, although for the most part you're going to be working in logarithmic or XD uh, log. Uh, we can put the piano roll back in there again now. Um, you'll see on the uh, readouts here for the proportional Q, um, you have a B4 which uh, you can't lock it to specific notes like you can with the Cubase uh, uh, EQ. Unfortunately, you can't double click either to uh, type in your EQ. We'll have to do that manually. Um, but you can for the frequency, for example, if you want to get down to an A, we can type in 220 hertz. You'll see that is set to A3. Uh, same for the gain, you can manually type that in as well as the Q ratio. Before we continue into the masking as well, we should just take a look at the dynamic EQ as well. Each one of these bands is dynamic. We can open up this little box on the side. Uh, you can enable your dynamic EQ and you'll see these two little arrows uh, appear above and below the band that you're working with. If we wanted to say cut around 160 or something in the kick, we can bring the EQ down and we're going to be dynamically pushing it down, which is this little representation of this. You can switch that to move upwards as well, uh, or downwards, whichever you want. So in this case, when it passes the threshold, it's going to drop the EQ uh, at this point. Um, you can set the threshold here, and it's, let's take a listen. If we go up, we'll see this permanently applies the cut, and then as the threshold passes, it's gonna shoot it back up again. So in this case, uh, we wouldn't, wouldn't wanna be doing this, we wanna be pulling that down. We'd want the attack of the kick to get through, and then just after the attack, the body of the kick, we wanna roll off that 160 hertz, like this. Conversely, if we wanted to, say, bring out some of the frequencies in the attack of the kick further up here, let's say around 8K, somewhere like this. There's not a lot of top frequencies in this kick, but what we can do here is turn the dynamic EQ back on again. We'll say push upwards. So you'll see now normally the EQ will be flat in this case. Um, but as the kick plays with the threshold, as it passes the threshold, it's going to boost that kick. Mm -hmm. 
like such. So that covers the oh the dynamic EQ. The other thing that you can enable here, its default is set to internal sidechain. So if we turn on the sidechain, we can actually select which EQ is going to trigger or which EQ band is going to trigger the uh, threshold. Um, for example, if a lot of our kick frequency is down here, we can say the frequency that two is at when that plays band two that should trigger this uh, boost from the dynamic EQ. So you can see we're getting quite a bit more of a boost there. There is more information here, so obviously the threshold is higher. Let's switch back to band three again. You'll see there's decidedly less of a boost there because it's triggering from an area where there's less uh, content in. Uh, you can also run an external sidechain that you would enable in your DAW by bringing in uh, this year, selecting your source, and then you can trigger the sidechain from whatever's coming into the plugin externally. Right, uh, let's take a look at the masking functionality because this is a pretty cool feature. Now Cubase implemented this as well recently in uh, the 10.5 update. However, this one, um, I haven't seen any other DAWs have that native uh, functionality, Ableton Logic, for example. Um, and this does a really good job of letting you adjust the EQs on multiple things at the same time uh, to correct your masking. So we're going to check out the masking here. We're going to turn this on. Uh, we have another Neutron on this Yotta bass channel down at the bottom that's playing. I also want to add one to our sub bass. So let's just grab a, another instance of Neutron here. Yeah. So we have an equalizer on this version as well. You can see expand a sub. Okay, so let's uh, check out, we'll first check out the sub and take a look at the masking occurring there. So these highlighted areas that you see uh, are where frequencies are clashing. And we shouldn't be getting too much in this case because I am using a side chain on both of the bass lines. But uh, you can see there's a little bit of uh, build up around the sub area. I'm not too worried about that though. Um, we can dial up the sensitivity to see uh, a little bit more clearly what's going on. So in this case, um, we can see there's a little bit going on up top here. Uh, the subs, I don't want to get too rid of too much, but this stuff here in the um, sub this is not really necessary and there is some content frequency content in the kick that we want to maybe just unmask there so you'll see down at the bottom what we can do here uh, we could either push the kick out or we could switch to the sub which will change the eq on the sub channel and we can now reduce some of the eq down here in actual fact we might as well just cut off this entirely, we can use a low pass filter and we'll just set the slope a little bit steeper. We'll bring that all out. So there's far less interference going on here now around the kick area. Um, let's take a look at the other uh, EQ that we currently have in here. Dial back on the sensitivity slightly. So the kick really is um, most of the energy is around here, maybe a little bit around this section as well. So I want to just show you a cool little feature with this as well, is you can, we can set the learn function. And it will highlight areas of the most masking. It will automatically set those frequencies for you. Uh, now at the bottom here as well, you have this inverse link functionality. If you turn this on, you'll see on Yotto Bass, uh, our EQ currently looks like this. 
if we jump back to the kick and we grab this number two, you'll see it's automatically inserted a node on the Yotto base as well, uh, automatically to pull out and boost at the same time. So rather than having to boost double to get the kick out, you are subtracting from the base at the same time. It allows you to just more gently even out and carve out those frequencies for yourself. Let's take a listen. So really around that kick there, I want to be... Widen that slightly. And also that Yato bass is a mid bass, so what I'm going to do is also just cut out some of the lows. We'll set this one to a high pass. And the kick now is sufficiently coming through there. Uh, small changes like this will make a big difference to just helping you unmask um, uh, sort of focal points in your mix. It's a really nice little feature that you can jump around between different channels and adjust the EQs accordingly without having to actually even exit the plugin at all. You've also got a bypass EQs uh, button at the bottom. So listen carefully to the kick now, how much more presence it's got down at the bottom. That's without. And there you have it. So that pretty much covers all the uh, functionality on the EQ. Uh, lastly, I did miss over this. Uh, the soft saturation toggle uh, will just allow us a little bit of soft saturation on the input stage of the EQ. Uh, you can play around with that if you'd like. We could probably saturate this a little bit by bringing up the input. So it allows you to drive the signal quite a bit more and it's a much more pleasing result as opposed to the digital clipping that occurs if you overdrive the uh, inputs like so. So really nice to be able to turn that on. Uh, it's just you actually use that because it's just a far more pleasing um, tone, especially with elements that take up a lot of headroom and that are quite loud, like this kick, for example. Right, uh, we're going to move on to the next module in the next video. I will catch you guys then. Cheers. Thanks, everybody, for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.